We will wrap up yesterday's notes, and then we will head into 2-2 for our proportional relationships and graphs. So, give us a second to get centered here. You know, centered, like focused, or in yoga, if you like, you know, centered. It's very hard for me to do tree pose in jeans. Yeah, you don't wear jeans to yoga. All right. <clears throat> this one? All right, Dom's really excited that he just figured this out. So, Dom, drop some knowledge on us. Okay. So, I figured that out by doing 6 divided by 3. Yeah, so if I wanted to see how I could multiply to go from 4 to 6, to find that value, we check what division is made here. So, Dom did 6 divided by 4, which comes out to be what? 1 and a half. Yeah, 1 and a half or 3 halves. So Don knows if I multiply moving left to right by three halves, I then get six. six. And I can check, what if I multiply by three halves here? And guys, the nice thing about improper fractions is you can multiply by three and then divide by two. I would do three yeah. by two. Yeah, so six times three, 18, divided by two, nine. 10 times 3, 30, divided by 2, 15. 12 times 3, 36, divided by 2, 18. All of these have the exact same relationship of 3 halves. Now, there's another way that we could actually do this. It's almost the exact same way that Don just took, but it's just thinking slightly differently. So... If I'm talking about consistency and things being proportional and being the same, we just got done with talking about unit rates, right? Could you figure out a unit rate for this situation? Yeah. Yes. What would your unit rate be? What would your label be? Anish? Yeah, but which would come first? When we use time and a unit rate, which comes first, which comes second? Time comes... So we would do seconds per heartbeat, or heartbeats per second. Yeah, it makes more sense when the time comes second. So if we did beats per second, and I did this division, 6 divided by 4, gives me 3 halves beats per second. 9 divided by 6 gives me 3 halves beats per second. 15 over 10 gives me 3 halves beat per, beats per second. And 18 over 12 reduces to 3 halves beats per second. You can either check the multiplication or check that all the divisions come out to be the same. And that depends on your brain, whichever you think is easier. Do you want to check the multiplication left to right? Or do you want to check the division right to left? And that's up to you. Either way, we'll check if it's proportional. Now, if we take three halves beats per second, how many beats per minute would that be? Times 60. Times 60, right? So if I did times 60, 60 times 3 would be 180, right? Divide that by 2, we'd get 90 beats per minute. Which is kind of a resting heart. It's not that fast, but it's not that slow here. Mine, um, if I had my Fitbit on, my Fitbit broke. It used to be really fun because my Fitbit would track my heart rate all the time. It's about, but, I, okay, resting is where this kind of comes into the discrepancy. My heart rate when I was, like, normally teaching or whatever would hang out around 100. It'd be somewhere between 90 and 100. But I'm up, I'm moving, I'm talking, I'm, like, I'm not resting. When you're resting, it's normally... 60 to 80, but you guys, your heart rate will be higher because you're kids. You're small, like the smaller your body, the faster your heart rate. I'm so, so a mouse, their heart rate's crazy fast. Question? What are you at? 
Katie wants us. So Sean is just standing, doing nothing, taking notes. 81 beats per minute. So he's close to that 90. Don't run around there. But if you did, then your heart rate would most definitely increase. All right, so flip over to your two two notes. When we have a proportional relationship, let's still think about our heart rate. Now, Sean, do you know how your Fitbit actually works to calculate your heart rate? I don't know. Yeah, it can count your heartbeats, but it doesn't just need to count your heartbeats. It needs to relate that to how many beats in what? A certain amount of time, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be a minute, because I guarantee Sean's watch is not waiting a minute before it calculates his heart rate. All it needs to know is so many beats over so much time. So what if there's no time? What if there's no time? How many heartbeats would happen if there was no time? None. Because if there's no time at all, nothing can happen. So if we were to graph this, our heartbeats, it would actually start at the point zero, zero, because zero seconds would give us zero heartbeats. Then four seconds gives us six. So that would be a point on the graph. Six seconds gives us nine. That would be a point on the graph, and so on and so on. So, if I've not talked about this yet, my brother has a couple classic cars. We are, and for years, I've been able to use this problem. We are eventually going to repaint the 79 Firebird. And I will bring pictures if we ever do it this year. But eventually, we're going to repaint it. But when you paint cars, most of the time, you mix the paint color. You don't just buy paint, like, when you go to... And actually, who's ever bought paint at, like, Lowe's or Home Depot? Does it come pre-mixed? No. Have, have you watched them mix it? Now, yeah, if you want to be thoroughly impressed, I'm coming to you. You can drop your name. If you want to be thoroughly impressed, go to Ace Hardware on Hard Road. It's not, it's, so it's actually like Hard Road Hardware or something, but it, it's an Ace store. They mix their paint manually. They literally have like maybe six or eight different colors, and depending on what color you order, they look at a little card and it tells them how many milliliters of each color to drop into it. So they literally set a little thing set the knob, push the button, and it drops in that much color. They move to the next knob, drop in that much color. They move to the next knob, drop in that much color. They put the lid back on, shake it all up. The colors mix together, and if you know much about art, all colors will mix together to make new colors. If you don't do it right, you end up with like a brown or a black, like a baby poop is what we like to call it. So, Jeremiah, what were you going to say about mixing paint? I was going to say about the heart rate. You should just add the top of the top of the paint to Yeah, and that also shows you that it's proportional because those agree. That if you took the four seconds and the six seconds, so if you if you aren't picking up what Jeremiah's putting down, he's saying if you add the four and the six, you get ten. And if you add the six and the nine, you get fifteen. So that's like more evidence that it's proportional. Oh, Ozzy? Um, it might be. I forget what their technical name is. Yeah. Okay, so Zettler. But but either way, like Lowe's and Home Depot and those places, they have a machine that does it for them. The computer does everything. I when I when I've only bought paint there once, but I was blown away. I was like, dude, you guys still do this manually? And he was like, yeah, it's just as good, and we don't have to upgrade our system. So it's really impressive if you go buy paint up there and support local business. That's pretty good. So if we are painting our car Granny Apple Green, Granny apple green, bright green, like granny apple green. What are the primary, I need a hand for this, what are the primary colors? If you know much about computers, you might know, Acadia. Uh, red, yellow, blue. Uh, is green in there or not? So, okay, so that's where it's interesting because computers do most of their thought process in red, green, and blue. But... Okay. When, when this light, like how we perceive the light, it, the colors are red, yellow, green, but the actual colors that we use, the primary colors are actually red, yellow, blue. Cool. I just learned something. Thank you, guys. That's sweet. Thank you, Whitney. So, Granny Apple Green would not just be a color that, like, exists. They would have to make it. So they make it 
by mixing certain amounts of yellow and blue because those are our two primary colors. So there is a strict relationship between how much they use and how many gallons of paint we're going to get. So if we look at this point right here, bring a little line out here. That gives me, um, actually, let's over to the side here. Let's just make a table. This will make my life easier. And by my, I mean all of our lives. So let's have blue, yellow, and total. Just make a table. It'll make our life nice and easy. So now you don't actually need this arrow then. So I do my first point right here. Total. Total amount of paint. So that first point that I have notated there, how... Dom, we already talked. Hey, Katie, we already talked. That's ironic that you were the first two people in the card sec. Ashley, how many gallons of blue do I get? That point that I put a red dot on. Five, right? Because I go across my graph to the y-axis. I get five gallons of blue paint. How many gallons of yellow paint? Three, which means how many total gallons would I get? Eight. Now, if I double the amount of blue paint that I want to get, and now, now I get 10 gallons of blue paint to keep the color the same. Jeremiah, how? Bless you. So, to keep the same color, if I double my blue, I got to double my yellow. But now, what if we jump up the graph? And let's say we come here. Julian. Ah, you're weird. You guys move, so it's kind of fun every day that I have to find you. So, Julian, how many gallons of blue there? So, if I relate that to my previous, what happened between my blue line here and my green line? Times three. So, I can infer that my yellow would have to be 18. And when I check it on my graph, it is. And my total there would then be 48 gallons. And that would paint a few cars, I would think. Yeah. So then, and we skipped over the 24. We skipped over the 24. What about 56 gallons? How? If we want to make 56 gallons total, but well, we haven't gotten there yet. Ellie, do you have a question? Okay, so we know this point is not yet 56 gallons. Let's try the next one. What about this point right here? That'd be 35 and then 21. What's 35 and 21 add up to? 56. And if I compare that to my original 5 gallons, we multiplied by 7, and we multiplied by 7, and we multiplied by 7. If you're painting a fleet of cars, I mean, think, think about when car companies paint vehicles. They're painting car after car after car. Yeah. So the biggest thing to see in these graphs, I'm going to jump past the second. Actually, yeah, let's do this one, then see if you guys can figure this out. I know. It's from our got it, which is why we went back and did that got it. So we want to take these points and graph them. Your x-axis is your time. Your y-axis is your heartbeats. And I want to see if you can figure out what will go on these lines. That a proportional graph is a blank blank that goes through the blank. So plot your seconds across your x values, your heartbeats up 
your y values and then connect them all and see what you notice. Um, you're going to look at graphs in your homework and make inferences off of that. So, anyone want to come do it? Yes. That means when I get to his card, I'll skip him. Oh, bro. No. Sit down. No. Sit down. No. Sit down. No. Put your points up no. there. Now, Jeremiah was close, but he's trying to do the fast, lazy, easy. Andrew, would you like to come up? Where is no way back there. All right, so we'll stick you to the side. Flynn, you have any interest in coming up? No. Other? No. Other Jeremiah? Yes. All right, come up here. Now, go ahead while he draws this up here. Make predictions for these three graphs. Do you think they are proportional? You might so immediately trying to draw a line. There you need to put a couple points on the graph first. Then you'll draw a line. So, like these points are not lining up. Where you, need to be. you have four six. So four six is good. Six nine is six. But I don't. I'm not. Am I supposed to? Yes. 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 Should I draw the line? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Cool. It was just a little sloppy. No. Oh, I like your points. Sloppy. Now, what do we notice about how the points connect together? If you've ever played Connect the Dots, this is a really special Connect the Dots because Sam... So what... Well, okay, so that goes through the... Over here is going to be origin, which is actually the point that is zero, zero. So right here... You guys could label that this is our origin point. But Andrew, what else do you notice about the line? Not just diagonal, a straight line. So I did not want to give this away to you guys before we started our lesson, but here's our learning target, that I can recognize a proportional relationship in a graph by identifying the line is straight, cannot curve, cannot change directions, and it goes through the origin because we have to have this zero, zero point. Like if we tracked my heart for zero seconds, I would get zero heartbeats. If I was giving cookies to zero people, I'd give out zero cookies. If I ran for zero minutes, I've run zero miles. Mon so if it started at like two Not proportional. So what we're saying by goes through is when it hits the y-axis or when it hits the x-axis, it's got to do it right here. If it started like this, this would not be through the origin. If it started like this, this would not be through the origin. These would both be straight lines, but they're not through the origin. Push a bit. Exactly. So, like, if I start, like, if I start saving money right now, but I've already got a hundred dollars in the bank, and then I start saving twenty bucks every week, I started at a hundred. I did not start at zero. So it's not proportional because I didn't start at zero. Does that make sense, Evie? Yeah. Did I not do that in this class? Okay, hold up. Hold up. Yeah, not right now. I know where you're going next. Not right now. So, moving on. To graph A, 
Flynn, when we look at graph A and we're looking, is it a straight line? Does it go through the origin? If it's yes to both of those, it's proportional. So what do you think about A? Are we proportional? So I'm talking to Flynn, if you're listening, and I directed that question straight to Flynn. So is the graph of A a straight line? Okay, does it go through the origin, or does it start at the origin? So up here, by the way, where we said through, this is through or start, because actually all lines really can continue forever. It's just what section we look at. So for this graph, and that, that might be what threw you off. It doesn't go through the origin, but it starts at the origin. So yes, it is proportional because the origin point is part of the line. Solomon, I know you stepped out of class. So make sure you get these down. I'm coming to you here in a second. I'll put your card back in the stack. Anish, for B, is that a proportional relationship? Yes, it's not proportional. Yes, it's not proportional? Yeah. So, no, why? So it is, because it's saying, do, do, do these graphs show a proportional relationship? So my answer would be no. Why? Yeah, so there's no origin point. Guys, I have cards. Elena, what about graph C? Why? Because it's not a straight line. Exactly. It changes direction okay. right here, so it does not stay straight. Now, each section of the line is straight, and if I only looked up until here, it would be proportional, but I have a continuous that changes direction right here. So I would probably circle that little kink where it changes direction. Was it straight the whole time? Yeah, exactly. It cannot change direction ever. You put that down because you just broke it. So the question is, do you need to be using that right now? If not, why are you holding it? So your friend looks at this graph and claims it to be proportional. What would be your response to your friend? <laughs> you are not a very nice friend. <laughs> Ozzy, what would you respond to your friend? No, because when the line goes up, it gets steeper and steeper. Yeah. Graph, a line does, so we could say, no, this line curves. And proportional, guys, we should be writing. It's very obvious for me to see when you're not writing. Proportional relationships must be straight. So this is actually, um, if you want to know, this sort of relationship is either, you don't have to write this down, it's either exponential or it's quadratic. But actually most quadratics are exponential. So if you want to have a name for that type of graph, that would be an exponential graph, which uses an exponent, like a power. So this graph would be the graph of um, x squared. So if I square 1, I get 1. If I square 2, I get 4. If I square 3, I get 9. So this would actually be the graph of y equals x squared, if you really want to know. And that, because it uses an exponent, is exponential. So unlike an exponential graph, we have situations where we have a relationship where it's multiplicative, or there's just multiplication happening. So, when we are given the equation y equals 6x, let's make a t-chart of x as my input, y as my output. 
If I input 0, and we know that y is actually 6 times x, Solomon, what would 6 times 0 be? Zero, right? Because anything times zero is zero. So I'm going to go ahead and put my zero, zero point and notate that that y would be zero. Now wait, what's weird about my graph? There's no like, numbers. Ah, there's no numbers. Now even though there's no numbers, I know that intersection of the x and the y coordinate is zero, zero. But I need to give this numbers. Now wait a minute. We can give numbers that make my life easier. Let's generate our t-chart and determine my scale based off that. Do you know what I'm about to do? Yeah, you could count by twos. We, we could count by twos or threes or fours, or four. we can count by whatever we want, right? Let's look at my inputs outputs. So Whitney, if I input a one here, what will be my output? Six, because I do six times the one. Noah, if I input a two here, what's my output? Uh, Jeremiah Smith, if I input a 3, 18, how are my y's going up? By 6. So if I want to make my life easy, I make my y's go up by 6. How should my x's go up? By 1. To make my life as easy as possible, just do it by 1. Because look, my x's are going up by 1's. Just do it by ones. How come the eighth graders are doing much more better than they are? What? How come they're not doing less math than they are? What do you mean? Well, I thought eighth graders were more wasn't really doing that much better than they are. You just don't understand how it's different. No, they're in the same types of skills, but to a deeper level. Yeah. Yeah, the one I just posted yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, how to find the area of a regular polygon based on trigonometry. So that we don't get into working exponents with exponents this year. That way, so we get into what do I do with an exponent, but but how exponents work together, how you combine terms of exponents. That's a much deeper skill. That there's knowledge right now that you don't know. You don't know. Does that make sense? Yes. You don't know what you don't know <laughs> that they need to know to solve those problems. So, hold up. Let's put these points on the graph. I've got my red point for 0, 0. By the way, notate that this is 0 for y and 0 for x. Make sure that you always notate that. So then my blue point, go 1 on the x-axis, 6 on the y-axis, and put your point there. My green point, 2 and 12, put that point. My black point, 3 and 18, put that point. What do you notice about when I connect all these points? It's going to be a straight line, and it goes through the origin. Mr. Mr. Uh, Hudson? Yes? You said they, they learned how to add exponents. You did that the first time. So if I gave you 3x squared plus 4x to the third minus 7y to the fourth. I can do that for you. Hey, Jeremiah, you can't. None of those can be combined. None of them are like terms, and none of them work together. This is an expression. But you would multiply the 3x, you would make the exponent go away. You multiply it by itself two times, and then you get Jeremiah, this is not knowing what x is. You can't multiply something that you don't know. How about this? Mr. Smith, come see me at AOR Extensions, and I will show you the work they're doing. If you can do it, awesome, but I don't want you thinking that you can when you're probably going to do it in the wrong method. Because if we didn't know what x was, and we were trying to simplify this expression, that would be a totally different situation. So the x's, we could combine them, but there's a very specific way we have to because they have different powers right now and different coefficients. So we'd have to combine the coefficients 
then combine the similar variables. So the x values we could push together, the y we couldn't combine that with anything because x and y are unlike terms. So the x's could push together, but I can't solve it. I could simplify it. Then we would say like that expression is equal to 17 or something. Then we could solve it, but it's pretty darn difficult. So try this on your own. Make a t-chart of your plug-in values. We know that y is actually 4 times your x plus 1 more. This exponent is on oh, the x. Okay. It has nothing to do with the three. That cube has nothing to do with the four. It's only on the x. You don't know what you don't know. So you just accept that for now. That's why I'm here. That's why they pay me the big bucks. They pay me good. They pay me good during the month. That's why. Like you just don't know that you don't know how to combine them. So when you think you do, you're going to teach yourself stuff wrong. So please stop thinking that you know something that you haven't done. Because when you do that, you teach yourself stuff wrong. And that's really dangerous. You need to slow down. If you want to see what it would actually be. And you're probably not going to understand it. That's fine. Because these both have x's, I can, I can look at them both together, but I have to take the 3 and the 4, and then the x's and the x's. But the problem is this is addition. I could combine these if this was multiplication. But because it's addition, and the x's have different powers, this x squared is different than x cubed. If we were multiplying, we could combine them. But because we're adding, it doesn't do as well. Not, there's really no, I mean, I could make this like 3 times x times x plus 4 times x times x times x, because that's your x cubed, that's your x squared, minus 7 times y times y times y times y. I mean, that's not simplifying, but that's not what we're doing. So, stick with what we're doing right now so that we can get to this point, right? you got to do the prep work to get there. So, teacher, why is this for this one? Anybody have any issues for our math class? You can make the scale whatever you want it as long as it isn't given to you. So because my x and my y axes have no scale yet, the only thing that matters is that this point is 0, 0. But then how much each block is worth is up to you. So the horizontal worth and the vertical worth do not have to be the same. So I could make this go up by ones, and I could make this go up by hundreds if I wanted. Oh, that would be really but that would not work for this situation, but I could. If I wanted to, I could. Yeah. Because we're not there yet. So, sorry to call you out in the middle of class. How selfish of a question was that? I want you to give me your attention right now for something that we haven't done yet and delay the class in getting to, getting to that point. Think about the fact that that was kind of selfish. So, if I plug in x values, we always start with 0. 0, 1, 2, 3, maybe 4. If I plug in a 0, and I do 4 times 0 plus 1, Jaslyn, what do I get there as my output? Yep. Uh-huh. Ah, so I get 0, 1. So if I go to put that point on the graph, well, I don't even know where to put it yet because I haven't given myself any scale. So let's just keep generating points and then determine the scale. If I plug in a 1, Sean, what do I get as my output? 5. Ellie, if I plug in a 2, what do I get as my output? 9. Samantha, if I plug in a 3, 13 because 3 times 4 gives me 12 plus 1 more. And if I plug in a 4, Whitney, if I plug in a 4, what's my output? So 4 times 4. Then add one more. Yep. So are these going up by consistent amounts? Yes. Yes. 
Yes. Not... They're yes. each going up by four, right? Yes. Is this a proportional relationship? Yes. No. No. Here's why. I'm going to make my scale um, in four just to make one. I'm actually going to do it by fives. So I'm going to do one, obviously, on the x-axis. But then I'm going to go five, ten, fifteen, twenty. So you don't have to, but that's just the scale I'm going to choose. Zero, one. Well, that would be approximately here-ish. But it's not at the origin. So this is what makes it not proportional. Then I plug in 1, 5. Okay, go to 1 on my x, 5 on my y, 2, 9, 2 on my x, almost up to 10. 3, 13, a little over halfway between 10 and 15. And 417, a little over 15, just under half. So when I connect these all together, do I get a straight line? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Do I go through the origin? No. No. So I would circle this point right here in your T-chart and write not proportional. It has to have the zero, zero point. So, you have answer space off here to the right. I want you to break apart what each of these things mean. We're going to answer one of these together, and this is a lot like what your homework is. Determining what the points represent, and then answering questions based off the table. So, what does the point 190 represent? Remembering that the first points always are x, and the second points always are y. So, Ozzy, what's 190 represent? Yeah, but we got to use the numbers in our answer. So 190, 90 feet in one second. So your answer for A could be 90 feet in one second. I'm going to zoom out. It's a cheetah. So nine. So then answer the other questions on your own. Isn't a cheetah like basketball? No, there's like a thing that goes fast. Hey guys. Hey guys. Research that on your own time. We gotta finish this. Alright, now it's question two. Wait, now does it make sense? Now that we've covered it all in class? Yes, I can. Are you wanting me to? Or you asked the wrong question. She said, would you check my answer? Well, yeah, that's the origin, but what does it mean in the context of this situation? <laughs> Elena, what would the point zero zero represent in this situation? Yeah, zero feet in zero seconds. What would, or sorry, how far would the cheetah be able to run in three seconds, Anish? Anish, you sure? So if it's 90 feet for every second. We know the unit rate is 90 feet per second, and then I'm given three seconds. It is 270 feet. That is almost the length of a football field in three seconds. This is just constant speed. So the cheetah's running at a consistent speed. We don't know. We don't know if it's its top speed, but it's a speed it can run at consistently. 
Yeah, I mean, cheetahs can run for a long time. Yeah. Dude, if you go to the zoo in the new Africa part, they do a cheetah run because they now have, like, a, a system where they put, like, a, a bait thing or whatever. It looks like a... a yeah, it looks like a rabbit or something. I mean, I don't know what they're trying to... But they, they like, run really crazy fast. Like, yeah, I mean, that's not that fast. So, think so, and somebody just tried to correct me. A football field is 100 yards, but every yard is three feet. So a football field is actually, how many feet? 300. So think about watching somebody run across the football field in three seconds. That's one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. It's like, it's fast, but it's not insanely fast. Like you'd be able to see it. Think like, I don't know if you guys have ever been to like races or anything like that, where you see like cars or planes or things fly, like a car driving at a hundred miles an hour, not that hard to see. Cars out on 270 are all driving at like 70, 80 miles an hour all the time. So this speed is not that much faster, or sorry, but that's 90 feet in one second. We could convert that to miles per hour if we wanted to, um, but that's going a little bit further than we need to right now, and we're almost out of time. But D, assuming the cheetah continues to run at the same speed, how long would it take him to run 900 feet, Evie? 10 seconds. That's awesome. Wait, what is the word that Ten seconds. We have our mastery for chapter one tomorrow. Your homework priority should be to make sure all of your chapter one homework is good. You can leave chapter two till next week for all I care. Make sure chapter one is done. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful day. It actually sucks that he's fast as a cheetah because he would get weird after he's Well, that's the thing. They're really, really fast, but they also have really, really good stamina.